welcome to Super Size vs Super Skinny as two new diet disaster zones swap meals for a week. Tonight in the feeding clinic is Louise, the queen of convenience food. In the last seven years I've gained over eight stone. And Carly, who can't find the time to eat. I can go the day feeling hungry, but it won't have any effect on me. Both girls are in their early 20s, but their diets have sent them to the opposite ends of the scales. I know I could eat more and I could... I... What is it that stops you? I don't know. I don't know. Plus, our four anorexics struggle with the challenge of making and eating pizza. Oh, you're, you're really, gonna, you've had enough. Really, I'm going to stop. And Anna Richardson discovers ballet ain't as easy as it used to be. This was easy when I was five. This week's Super Skinny is 22-year-old Carly Pitten from the West Country, who's fed up with her feeble frame. I am too skinny. I look at myself and just think there's just bones. I've lost so much confidence and I've just become quite a sort of inner person. And it's got to the point now where I just I don't feel great about myself anymore. Working as a promotions manager, Carly's career has taken over her life, leaving her too busy to eat. I'm jumping in and out of my car, I'm grabbing something maybe. If I'm near a shop, then I'm on the go. And that's that. I haven't got time to sit down and just eat a meal. This hectic lifestyle has left her running on empty. I do get really tired, I do get really lethargic. And I think to myself, it's, it's got to be something to do with my diet and, and the fact that I'm not eating. For the next five days, Carly will be living in the feeding clinic, overseen by Dr Christian Jessen. Hi, Carly. Nice to meet you. She's undergone a full medical to make sure she's up to the challenge. 101 pounds. That's a scarily slim seven stone three pounds. 25 inches around your tummy. A healthy weight for a woman of five foot five is between eight and ten and a half stone. So Carly is seriously underweight. So Carly, your BMI now works out at 16.4. OK. A BMI as low as yours is in the underweight category, and that means that there are certain medical problems associated with being underweight that you may well develop if you stay this weight. I think I've got quite a bad relationship with food, just in the sense that I don't I don't see the need to eat it. I usually skip lunch, and then if in the evening it comes to, say, 9 o'clock, I've already snacked before then, and then I can't, can't eat a meal in the evening then either. It's got to the stage now where even Carly's younger sisters are worried. Her eating habits affect the whole family because we're all constantly watching over her to make sure she is eating, because obviously we want her to live a healthy lifestyle. When you see her in sort of a bikini or a dress, she looks really skinny. And as well, like, f uh, the figures, the sort of seven, seven stone and stuff like that, is quite scary. Food isn't a priority. It's just there for me to sort of pick at when I need it, really. To wage war on Carly's food issues, it's time to send in the heavy artillery. Step forward mum of one, Louise Knox. Well, I'm on here. Two, six, one pounds. That's 18 stone nine, and more than twice Carly's size. 50 inches around your tummy. Sometimes of a day, but when I'm in on my own and stuff, I, do, I get really, really bored. So um, I find myself going to the cupboard or going to the fridge, and I just snack all day. At five foot three, a healthy weight should be between seven and a half and ten and a half stone, meaning Louise is at least eight stone overweight, and it's easy to see why. The kind of food that I buy is like your chicken nuggets, burgers, chicken strips, or chips and fish fingers. When you look down at my plate, it is just beige, there's no colour apart from if I've got a bit of red sauce, and that's it. Right, Louise, so having done your height and weight, we have worked out your BMI and it comes to 45.2.
BMI is between about 20 and 25, yeah. normal. Anything above 40, you're running into problems like increased risk of cancers, increased risk of stroke, increased risk of heart attacks, diabetes, high blood pressure, you, you name it. Yeah. Being that overweight is a risk for it. She may be a young mum, but carrying all that extra weight is ruining Louise's family life. I can't go swimming with my son. I can't play football with him. And it's like, if Joe wants a cuddle when, when he goes to bed, I can't lay in his bed with him and give him a cuddle in case I break his bed. So I've like, got to sit on the floor and le lean on the bed. I hate it. I hate what I've turned into. I think the time to change has come. I think she's fed up with it herself now. I think she's seen how it affects her, how it affects her as a parent, and I think that's what upsets her the most. And any thoughts of expanding her family have been scuppered by the effects of Louise's disastrous diet. I'd, I would love more children, I'd love another child, but I think in the past 18 months I've already had two miscarriages, um, and I, I do put that down to my weight. Feeling that I feel part, partly to blame, um, it's horrible and upsetting, but I would love to have another child. With a whopping 11 stone weight difference, Louise and Carly will be swapping diets for five days in a bid to get them to open their eyes to the damage they're doing to their bodies with their irrational eating habits. But before finding out what's on the menu, it's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. So what size are you then? Uh, six at the moment. 24. Are you? To be the same age as somebody and to, to look so different is just a bit of an eye-opener, really. It's I think the top of my arms are bigger than your thighs. Looking at her, I think she has one meal, she'll end up exploding. <laughs> Louise and Carly have kept a food diary for a week and Dr Jessen is about to confront them with their shocking intakes. So, Kylie, we're going to start off with your breakfasts. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> what is that? A chocolate muffin. We'll let that one go. That might have been a one-off. Let's have a look at another breakfast. Ah, uh, OK. That's your cereal. And some what? And some crisps as well? I can't believe that's for a week. <laughs> OK. Let's have a look at lunch. Here we go. Fingers crossed, Louise. Hey? Bit of pasta salad. Where do you get your lunches from? I don't have a set lunch break, so it's just a case of catch it and grab it and run with it. And... But unfortunately, you're not quite catching it, are yeah. you? You're kind of missing. It. Let's go off for dinners. Cottage pie. Where's that coming from? Is this you make it? No, it's coming from a box. Do you ever cook for yourself? I can't cook. You can't cook. You do snack a little bit, again, because you're on the go, and I think you must be really quite hungry. Let's have a look at your snacks. It's fruit. Are you trying to pat yourself on the back here? Yeah. <laughs> you are, yeah. There's nothing healthy in there at all. There at all. There isn't, is there? With her non-stop lifestyle, Carly should be consuming 2,000 calories a day, but she's only getting 1,300. That's a weekly under-eat of two and a half days. Right, Carly, come in close. I want you to watch this. Louise, start with breakfast, as we usually do. Here we go. Wow, that's a good old traditional fry-up. <laughs> a lot of toast. So, let's move on to lunches, then. Burger and chips. This is all very high-fat, high-salt food. And again, you're not a huge fan of fruit and veg, are you? I do love fruit and veg, but... You don't eat them, do you? No, I don't. Is it going to be the same sort of thing, do you think, for dinner? Or do you think we're going to see a bit more variety? I think it might be the same sort of thing. So we've got more pizza, more chips. Do you like chips, Carla? A small amount. Yeah, we also know what you're going to get this week. <laughs> Let's have a look at what sort of stuff you snack on. Wow. What can we say about this? Disgusting, unhealthy. Gorging on three and a half thousand calories a day means Louise is overeating to the tune of five days' worth of food a week. It scares me, the thought of fitting the amount of food that was in her tube into me, because 
it was pretty much the same size as me. I know I ate a lot, just didn't realise how much. But things are going to change. Coming up, supersized Louise is pushed to the limit. And Anna Richardson discovers a controversial new treatment that fights the signs of ageing. Can you see a difference, Alice? Well, yes, but not a very good one right now. You're scratched. I'm scratched and red. Richardson and I'm obsessed with getting my body beautiful. Whilst at the moment I'm far from perfect, luckily most of the bits I don't like I can get away with covering up with the right clothes. But the part of the body you can never hide away is your face. Celeb faces, always perfect, no spots, blemishes, hairy chins, wrinkle free and we're expected to have glowing skin just like them. Next year it's the big 4-0 for me. And I never thought that I would be one of those women that obsesses about looking younger. But suddenly, I find that I am. And I look at my face, and I can see the wrinkles, and I can see these nose-to-mouth lines, and I can see the fact that my face, whereas it used to be quite, quite high, a bit like that, it's now just sagging. And I look a bit sad. And if there is something out there that's going to reverse that ageing process, then believe you me, I'm going to grab it with both hands. Surgery used to be the option, but you know what? It's so passé. Non-invasive treatments are now at the cutting edge of anti-ageing. I admit that I'm already hooked on Botox and I'm keen to investigate just what else is out there. The newest kid on the block is a controversial technique that leaves none of the telltale signs of the wind tunnel nip and tuck and leaves you looking years younger. So I'm here to meet Dr Sister, who's brought this new procedure to the UK. Do you know what I'm really worried about? I'm really bothered about these are starting to form. When I was younger, I was more, a little bit more like that. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't like that. Women are com complaining about crows, lines, wrinkles, dull skin. Mm. But what about the difficulty? Mm. What mm -hmm. about ageing hands? Mm -hmm. 
What about elbows? Oh, what elbows. about knees? Now you can mean new neurosis. Okay. What do you mean elbows? elbows? Are we worrying about wrinkly elbows? Yeah. I hate you already. But it's not my elbows I'm here for. I want to know about Dr. Sister's new facial rejuvenation technique. A technique which we use here, it's called S3, which is self-stimulated serum. Right. Where basically we're using the patient's blood to stimulate the, the fat, the cells, not the fat cells, but the fibroblasts that generate the collagen. Okay. It's your own blood. So you're kind of growing new skin? Yep. Kind okay. of stimulating your skin to regrow naturally faster. I need proof of this, Dr. Sister. Show me proof. I'm really not sure I want to go to these lengths for a pretty face, but there's a willing guinea pig for me to observe, 40-something Alice. What kind of um, result are you hoping for? I'm just hoping for sort of fresher, healthier looking skin. S3 involves separating the blood platelets from the serum. This serum is the key component in renewing new skin cells. It's pumped with extra vitamins and then injected back into your face. Once inside your skin, the new serum gets to work helping to build healthy new cells, which will give you younger looking skin. Can you see a difference, Alice? Well, yes, but not a very good one right now. <laughs> You're scratched. I'm scratched and red. But you, you say that you feel obviously tighter and tauter. It feels tight and warm. Tight and warm. The whole procedure costs £500, and even though there are no alleged side effects, it never ceases to amaze me what women will go through in the name of beauty. But here's the before and afters, so judge for yourselves. That consultation was a bit of an eye-opener. I am now completely neurotic and paranoid about not only my face, but the rest of my body, including weird wrinkly elbows. So I've got a total shopping list of things that I've now got to tick off to get a brilliant body. This is a disaster. And disaster is no understatement when later I attempt to perfect my body with ballet. This is as far as I can go. Super skinny Carly weighs in at just seven stone three. She has no interest in food and often gets through a working day hardly eating anything. She swapped diets with supersizer Louise, who's 18 stone nine. It's morning on day two in the feeding clinic. On the menu for Carly is a monster fry up, but there's something she's concerned about. What is black pudding? Mm. Yeah, exactly. It's the blood of all the animals, I think. It must be something else. Water, cooked pork rind, oatmeal, pale barley, dried blood, rusk, flour, pork fat. That's quite evil, isn't it? <laughs> That's why I don't eat that. It's a yeah. For Louise, it's a quick fix, high fat, high calorie start to the day. I think this will be the first time I've had a brownie for me, Becky. <laughs> yeah. I sort of expected something really small for me breakfast. Um, but I didn't expect it to be really sickly and chocolatey. Just the thought of what it is. Oh, God, it's actually making me cringe. <laughs> Breakfast was OK, but just the back pudding, I just can't... Like, I didn't think I'd be able to eat them, and even when I tried it, it was just vile. <laughs> well, at least you tried it. I'm done. I don't think Louise is coping that well, actually. She's struggling already, like, even now. As the day wears on, Louise can't turn to her usual snacks for comfort. And by dinner time, hunger has taken hold, leaving her to take out her frustrations on the Indian takeaway she's serving up for Carly. But six chocolate fingers and a processed chewy fruit snack aren't exactly going to lift her mood. I knew as soon as she saw what was on the plate that she wasn't going to eat. <laughs> Are you going to eat us? No, I'm fine, thanks. You're not going to eat any of it. Not even that bit. Nope. 
you know, throughout the whole day, I, you know, I've been eating like half a brownie and for me tea, I thought surely pray to God there's got to be like, like a meal of some sort. And it was just chocolate. I just physically could not eat it. may have been what that day was all about. Was I didn't want to eat, but I was trying to give myself like a quick sugar rush to give me energy. And that was obviously what was in the house at the time. Is that all you'd have to eat like for the rest of the night? That would have been it, yeah. Seeing Louise sort of sat there, like really, really hungry and then not eating. And me knowing that that's my diet, it's been a real sort of eye-opener and making me think I actually really, really don't eat anything. I thought it was going to be hard with the food because, you know, I'm up against a skinny person's diet, um, but I didn't realise it would be this hard. I think it's the hardest thing like I've ever had to go through, like, mentally. And it's while looking through some old photos that Louise gets a chance to think about where her problems with food began. And that was me, I think I was 16. And it, were you still living at home then? Or was yeah. And then I think I was 18 on that one, but I'd moved out. I was in control of my own food. Yeah. So I was saying, so I put quite a lot of weight on there. And then I think two months later I fell pregnant. And then for 18 months, I didn't drink no alcohol, I didn't do anything, didn't have no takeaways. Mm. So it was like pretty, I think that was the only time I was like really, really healthy. But then once I stopped breastfeeding, I thought, yes, I can go out, get drunk, I can drink whatever I want, I can eat whatever I want. For Louise, this was a time to catch up on her lost youth. But then as I was doing that, I had a few problems happened in my life, which Looking back and looking at these photos, I remember just comfort eating, you know, getting down, thinking, oh, I'm ugly, and led to me having, like, really low self-esteem and yeah. no confidence. So, no, I think it's just more comfort eating yeah. in that part. I think in the future, if... Obviously, these problems will arise because, you know, I'm just living a normal life and you do get... You have your ups and downs. Um, and instead of turning to food, I'm going to have to find something else to do. And I think I'm just going to have to do a lot of thinking on how I can deal with things without using food. I think Louise has finally realised one of her major issues, and that is the link between her emotions and her eating habits. This connection has now got to be broken if she's ever going to lose any weight and lead a healthier lifestyle. So, Louise, I want to show you something now as a sort of bit of an extra medical warning. This is a film that's been made specifically for you. It's not a generic film. They know about you. They want to tell you something. They want to help you. Hi, I'm Lori. I'm 30 Stone, and this is my story. My weight actually started escalating um, when I got married the first time. I probably went from 21 stone to 30 stone in just under a year, which is a significant jump. I regret that I gave up, that I haven't retrained myself to eat properly. I would give anything to have a different life than what I have right now. When I'm showering, I have to watch special attention like behind my knees, um, under my breasts, um, definitely under the apron of fat, um, and in the genital area, it's hard to keep clean. Um, and I have to take extra special care I can't stand for significant periods of time, so anything more than a couple of minutes and I need to sit down. And to ease the time in the kitchen, um, we'll use the chair to do dishes or sitting at the stove. I like to use it while I'm waiting for the microwave. Louise, don't give up. 
Take care of your weight now if you can. Don't wait 20 years down the line and lose 20 years of your life when you can be living it to the fullest now. There's so many things that if I could go back, I would redo, and you've got a chance to change it now, so do it. What shocked you the most about that video? It's shocking that, you know, that she is that size, and I feel sorry for her. I don't feel sorry for me because I'm doing something about it. Why has this happened? I think this has happened because of sort of, um, I don't know, I've just sort of been living in like a fuzzy little world where I haven't really understood why I'm eating. I'm just eating and eating and I'm blocking everything out. So now I'm just going to have to rethink a few things and think, oh, when I do feel like that, what can I do instead of eating? I need to try and de learn how to deal with the feeling instead of eating it away. Coming up. Louise struggles with exercise. Troll, that's it, just say it back. Ah! Shit. Yeah, you gotta go and win <laughs> it back now. Fall it over. And our anorexic struggle with the task of making and eating pizza. Super skinny meal skipper Carly and supersized convenience food addict Louise have swapped diets in a bid to get them to face up to their terrible attitudes to food. It's day three in the feeding clinic and for dinner tonight Louise once again nibbles on half a packet of noodles and for Carly it's a supersized Chinese takeaway. Last bit of my noodles. I'm proper like fighting this now as to whether to put my knife and fork down or not. Got room for a little bit more if I was eating? Yeah. I could, I know I could eat more and I could... I, like, not... To, probably I couldn't finish it, but... What is it that stops you? I don't know. I don't know. As soon as Louise finished, that was it. I was ready to finish and I felt full. And 
When I think about it, that's what I do at home. As soon as, as soon as my boyfriend finishes, then I finish as well. Just doing that today with somebody completely different has really made me realise that actually something's going on there. These food issues of Carly's are worrying, and Dr Jessen wants to tackle her inability to finish a meal once her diet swap partner has cleared her plate. I know you sort of have issues with not being able to eat alone. Mm. Tell me about that. I don't know where it's come from, but just it's kind of made it more obvious coming here and Louise obviously not having anything on her plate, so she's finishing really, really quickly. And then I, I'm asking her just to slow down just so I can maybe finish either at the same time as her or before her. That concerns me because that's a tendency that some anorexics have. Hmm. They can't be watched eating. Yeah. It makes them very uncomfortable and it's sort of because the focus is all on their food and they feel like they must have eaten more than everyone else because they're still eating and no one else is yeah. and therefore they're going to get fat. It's a control issue that you need to crack. Okay. You do, you need to try and get over it yeah. because you know full well that you're not actually eating too much. You've been eating far, far too little. Yeah. I want Carly to realise that her diet has some dangerous health implications and that this cycle of her being unable to eat on her own and always stopping when others have finished their meal has just got to be broken. For the rest of this week, I want to focus on getting her to finish an entire meal so that she can learn that she really can eat more. It's day four in the feeding clinic and a new dawn brings with it an air of positivity. I'm feeling OK this morning. I thought I'd feel really hungry, but I'm feeling quite positive and the hunger isn't getting to me as much as what I, I thought it'd be. Morning. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit engrossed in cutting the bagel. <laughs> At last, supersized Louise is sitting down to a decent breakfast of cereal with skim milk and super skinny Carly's facing an egg and bacon bagel. Yeah. You feeling hungry? I am, actually. Really hungry. So far, Louise and Carly have barely eaten a meal. Could this be the end of the girls' hunger strike? Do you know what? I forgot how nice cereal was. Mm. <laughs> finished. I think it's the first time you've actually finished a full meal, which is quite good. <laughs> Later that day, the girls take time to talk about their issues with exercise and Louise seems to have her excuses for avoiding the gym already prepared. When I'm sat in and I'm like, oh, I've got to get my stuff ready, I've got to do this, and I've got to get in the car, I've got to get there. And it's even, I've got like exercise stuff at home and that, but it's like moving the table, getting it out the cupboard, and it's like, oh. You know, even the though motivation. Even, yeah, it's having the motivation to think, right, I'm going to do that. It's just getting over that initial, like, first week You've or got two. You've break of, a barrier. I know, um, and I think it's... That, that is what stops me, that barrier, but I think, no, I'm going to do it. While Carly is active with her busy working life and used to dance throughout her teenage years, Louise lazes around the house on the sofa, but she used to be the captain of her school football team. So maybe a kickabout could see the end of the excuses. I just, I, I won't, I do not want to do it. It would be good for you, though. Trust me. No, I don't. I know, but it's like I don't know what I'll benefit out of this. I really do not want to do the start. The start watching. of the exercise. No, but this is not a start for me. This is like. Imagine when you come out of this, you're, and people are going to be like, "Yeah, yeah, well no, done." No, but if I was slimmer and I wasn't as big, and the wouldn't. It's like I'm nearly out of breath now, and I've only walked from there. <laughs> Tonight, the girls are joining a women's professional football team for a training session. Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> well done. After a warm-up... <laughs> Louise overcomes her initial hang-ups about taking part. Control, that's it, just set it back. Ah! Yeah. Yeah, you got to go I'm going to end up over. I think if it was slimmer and I lose all my weight, I think if I got confidence back, I probably could come and do something like this as an activity. Oh, that's it. Come back, go back to the keeper, back, back to the keeper, good. <laughs> I'm going to get my fat backside down that gym. That is what I'm doing when I go back home.
Seven weeks ago, Ashley, Morag, Roz and Fiona embarked on a course of therapy to tackle their eating disorder, anorexia nervosa. The reality is that having a little bit of cake now and again is not going to kill you. Overseeing the group's progress, our consultant psychiatrist, Dr Peter Rowan, and eating disorder dietitian, Ursula Philpott. The course is beginning to help the group make some real changes in their lives. I have been spending more time with my parents. We just understand each other a bit better. <laughs> to know that people actually do care about you suddenly is very reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to live my life in the way I live it at the moment. I want to be normal so that I can actually have my life back and instead of wasting it all worrying about food. Wish me luck. Today, the group are going to a takeaway to face their toughest challenge yet. I've brought them to a pizza restaurant where they'll be cooking and preparing and then eating high calorie and high fat foods. For most of us, Pizzas are a treat to be enjoyed once in a while, but anorexics see them as high-stress food. Eating pizza, it's probably one of the scariest foods you could ask me to eat. Pizza is always rather synonymous with um, not very nice fast food takeaway and the yak. Pizza for me is something that sort of carried a, a fatty stigma with it. Making a pizza from scratch using high-fat ingredients will force the group to confront their controlling anxieties about the food they eat. First up, they prepare the base. It may seem very surprising to a lot of people, but anorexics, in fact, are foodies. Very good. They're people who actually love food. They're usually interested in it. They've always loved it. In fact, they take this love to a really higher level of being completely obsessed by it. I love cooking. What I make is quite scrummy. Uh, oh, yeah, this is great. And put a bit of that in and, put it and mix it all up. And I'm quite good at it, actually. It seems that there's not much else in her life that is as important as food what she's going to be eating, what she's going to be buying from the shops, what we're going to be having for dinner. Ashley's self-starvation has meant he's denied himself high-calorie food like pizza for five years. I'm just so stringent with my ingredients that it's just not enjoyable because I'm so tense and I'm so, so desperate for it not to include something that I'm not, that I'm not comfortable with. Cheese is a vital ingredient in any pizza. But for Morag, even a small handful is too much to bear. Put lots of cheese. We don't want too yeah. much cheese, yeah. thank that's, you. That's fine. Cheese. I used to eat cheese a lot when I was younger. Since I've had the illness, it's been much more of a, an issue for me because it's it's fat, really, and I just sort of see it as that. I can see tomato sauce. Thank you. OK. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -oh. Any amount of cheese is a challenge. It's just frightening. It's just like asking you to go and jump off a cliff or something. You'd think twice about doing it, and when somebody's pushing you to do it, it's, um, it's not easy. With the pizza made, the hardest challenge is still to come, eating them. We'll start with a slice each. I'll probably have, if it's a lunch, I'll probably have two of these slices. Pull it. Pull it. Yep. <laughs> I think the last time I had a pizza was about five years ago. So it was nice to sort of reintroduce that today. Cheese is what goes on pizzas, and that's what makes them taste nice. Um, so I was trying to kind of balance it all up. By eating pizza, Morag is facing her cheese phobia head on. The task was deliberately difficult. I asked them to step out of their comfort zone, to feel quite uncomfortable, and they all did that. The group managed to eat their first helping, but consuming more calories is their number one goal, so Ursula pushes them to try more. Well done. But for Fiona, the prospect of another slice is a step too far. You can't. You're, you're really... Gonna you've had enough. Really, I'm going to stop. I just think you're just going to keep eating and keep eating and keep eating until mm. someone actually says to you, stop. Mm. Anorexics almost always are terrified that they will lose control of their eating if they start and then eat out of control and gain weight. 
So essentially, they don't allow themselves particularly to eat the sort of foods which are most out of control. So they may deliberately avoid foods that they have previously felt were favourites. When I had pizza in the past, I would just, for a Saturday night tea, have a whole pizza. And it wasn't mm -hmm. about how big it is, how much it made me feel full. I just had to eat the whole pizza. I mean, anorexia has been described as a spring that gets wound tighter and tighter and tighter, and the tighter it gets wound, the more scary it is to let go. But actually, what we find is that when people do let go of the control a little bit, it doesn't mean that you eat and eat and eat and you won't stop. That, it never happens, but it's something that people always think will happen, and that's something you're terrified about happening again. Yeah. yeah. I've heard that. Have you? Mm. Most definitely. So you let it go I of the bit of the control. I have a huge appetite. Mm -hmm. I really do. That's and it. I've never been big, which is the ironic thing. I've never been big. I've never had to worry about it. But I worry now that I, I won't know where to stop. Although the group have struggled to clear their plates, eating a high-fat takeaway has been a huge step for them on their road to recovery. I think for me, it's, it's so good to make something and then sit down and enjoy mm. it and not have other people enjoy it and ask them how it tastes. Mm. It's great. <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah. It's always going to be tricky to do today, um, but I've managed and I had that second piece. It is hard doing things that you're out of completely out of your comfort zone doing, but it's, it's helping and it has helped. When I started off, I was really absolutely terrified of cheese. So to be able to put it on something and eat, you know, eat it today, it was a big step. It's hard to know how I feel about today. It's brought up a lot of emotions for me that are quite hard for me to deal. I think what's nice is that I can see how far I've come in the short space of time. As far as food's concerned, I really am starting to make good steps towards recovery. So it's about taking what I've learned from this and I'm very motivated to keep moving forward. It's the final meal in the feeding clinic and for Louise it's a plateful of jacket potato with cheese and beans. If I can think properly this is like the first proper meal, hot meal that's ever been put in front of me. While Carly's having chicken and chips. Are you looking forward to like getting it like a proper diet back tomorrow when I'm looking forward to mainly to trying to keep up this appetite. Mm. In just a few days you've come quite a long way. Do you know what I even want to eat these hard chips just so my plate's empty at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuffed. Is it worth leaving that? But I think no. I'm gonna do it, leave it. Because I think that is where to go wrong. I don't know when I'm full, and now I realise I'm full. I think, but there's only a little bit to finish, but you know, like, should I carry on? We're eating them. It's a real result for Carly and Louise as they reach the end of the diet swap. I think the hardest thing this week had to be, like, being pushed to the edge with food. Like, now I have honestly learned the true meaning of hunger, so, um, I didn't like it at the time, I really, really didn't, but now I am, I'm really, really glad. The hardest thing for me was eating when somebody else has finished. And I think, you know, from this experience, I've kind of taken away the fact that I can carry on until I'm actually full and not just when I think I'm full. Before they leave the clinic, the girls meet up with Dr. Jessen to get their individual 12-week healthy eating plans. So let's now give you your diet plans, which I've got over here. Louise, your one, and Carly, that's yours. Louise, yours is all about portion control. And with you, they were a little bit over the top, so we're going to control those more, and we're going to make the options a little bit more healthy. And Carly, yours, you're going to have to plan this. You need to take food with you so you can snack and make time to eat. I'm going to see you again in 12 weeks' time, all right, and hopefully you're well on the way to you losing some weight, you gaining weight, and I think you're going to feel so much happier and healthier and more confident, both of you. It's still going to take time. I don't think it's something that's going to change straight away. But I think if I just get myself mentally prepared, then then I'm able to do it. Right, right. this is it. Good luck. Oh, good wish you. And you. The Louise that came in at the beginning of the week was, I don't know, a bit confused. 
about stuff but I think now I'm going out of this house with like a completely different attitude to life and food and everything really I think my mind has completely changed and I'm just looking forward to the, the rest of my life. Coming up, Anna finds ballet is tougher than it looks. This is as far as I can go. And Louise and Carly hit the scales. I'm obsessed with getting the perfect body, but after several weeks of gymming it, I'm now looking for more enjoyable ways of achieving perfection. So what else is out there that will get me trim, taut and terrific? I want a body that is lean and sculpted like Sarah Jessica Parker. But what exercise does she swear by? Ballet! Yes, ballet. The 500-year-old exercise now in vogue in gyms all over the country. I haven't done it since I was five, but if SJP swears by it, then I'm willing to give it a go. Well, obviously it requires a lot of strength and a lot of control, mainly um, your core strength. If you go to, for a class for an hour, you're just working every single muscle in your body really non-stop, so it really is a good form of toning and strengthening the muscles. And legs onto the bar. Arms in anchor on, reach up and lengthen the spine, and stretch over. This is as far as I can go. Not too bouncy, girls, nice and smooth. This was easy when I was five. Ballet originated in the 15th century French royal courts. And down <laughs> gently at the end. And ballet training uses every muscle in the body to twist, bend and flex. One, two, three, and... As you build muscle, you also firm, tone up and drop excess fat. That ballet class was one of the most difficult exercises I have ever 
done. The combination of technique and actually putting your body into those very tight and controlled poses, unbelievably difficult. You try it at home, you tell me. Three months ago, supersized Louise and super skinny Carly checked into our feeding clinic. They've come back to see Dr. Jesson, but has all the hard work paid off? Carly, hi. hi. How are you? Good, thank nice you. Nice to see you again. Come and have a seat. So, tell me, how's it been? Good. Really good, actually. I feel better. I feel like I know what to eat, I know when to eat it, and it just makes me feel like better all round. And do you feel a little bit more relaxed about food now? Yeah, it's, it's, even though food has become a priority for me, which it wasn't before, mm. it's not like um, a chore, it's not like a nagging priority, it's just kind of a natural, it's become a natural thing. Let's go and get you weighed, shall we? Come with me. I'm really nervous about finding out if I've put weight on. For Louise, the last few months have brought an even more dramatic change. Well, two weeks ago, I felt a bit funny and uh, I'd been being sick, so I'd done a pregnancy test and it turns out I'm pregnant. Oh, that's great news. Quite frankly, I'm delighted and I can't think really of a better time for you to start eating sensibly and healthily now than when you're pregnant. In fact, I'm going to change things for you slightly now and say I don't want you now to try losing tons of weight during your pregnancy. I think that would be wrong. Yeah. I want you to try and keep eating healthily and exercising yeah. and then after the pregnancy, great, you'll find that the weight yeah. drops off. Before Dr Jessen reveals the results, the girls get a chance to see each other for the first time in three months. How are you? Oh, I'm good. You look amazing. How's it all been going? Yeah, it's been going really good, but I found out two weeks ago that I'm pregnant. Oh, congratulations! So... <laughs> oh. How are you both? Oh, very good. What do you think of each other? She looks amazing. She looks great. Really good. So for me, you know, the most significant changes you've both made are the emotional ones, the fact that you've cracked the comfort eating, you know, the junk food that you just keep turning to, you've knocked that on the head. No, that, that is one thing that I'm made up that I've learned and I've been able to achieve since the diet plan, and it's really, really good. For you, Carly, I mean, really, you had these big issues about you couldn't eat on your own. Definitely, I feel like, I feel much more chilled out when it comes to just sitting down and eating now. I don't feel like pressure anymore. And you enjoy food? Yeah. I do. For me, you have managed to make some big changes to your life, so I'm delighted. Not only that, you have put on a pound and you've put on an inch. <laughs> so it's not massive, all right? Let's, let's be honest about this. It's not massive, but as I said to you, I'm delighted in what you've done already. And you, madam, despite being pregnant and therefore ought to be getting heavier, <laughs> you've actually gone and lost half a stone. <gasps> really? Um, yes, I you have. lost a pound. <laughs> You've lost half a stone, seven pounds. Oh, very good. And you've lost five inches around your tummy. I'm expecting your tummy now to be expanding, but it's not. Very good. Yeah, very good indeed. I feel really happy uh, with what Christian's just told me. Um, I'm amazed that I lost half a stone and the five inches off my waist is it's, it's amazing. Even though I've only put a pound on and an inch on around my waist, I feel great actually because I've I've learned so much in, in all the other areas. It's just the sort of thing that's just going to keep going and going, and I know that I'll put weight on. Next time on Super Size vs Super Skinny, the feeding clinic gets two more food casualties. Biker Eddie is the leftover king of the road. I always think to myself, right, I'm going to actually cook twice the amount of rice that I need so I can actually have fried rice the next day. Whilst Louise is the hectic food hater from Hartlepool. I wish I could just put a, a big meal in a little pill, take the pill and be, get on one day. Our four anorexics reflect on how far they've come over the last eight weeks. I think what I've started to learn is that it's OK to challenge yourself. And actually enjoy eating their final meal together. Absolutely wonderful. Is it? Yes, <laughs> absolutely beautiful. And Anna Richardson's investigation into the body beautiful reaches a rather wet conclusion. 